prepare to be illuminated. Hi guys, in this video I wanted to share with you a deck which I absolutely love playing as. It's the Alpharius deck which I designed after the Alpha Legion nerf. So I'm going to go through the deck in a moment and talk through the individual cards. You can see the deck list over here. Now the general concept of this deck is it's got three win conditions and it keeps stunning the enemy until you reach those win conditions. So a win condition is basically a card or a combination of cards you can play to inflict a massive amount of damage and basically wrap up the match in your favor. So uh, I'm going to take a look now at the actual cards in the deck and talk you through this. So this deck, as I mentioned, is based around Alpharius first. So after his nerf, Alpharius' ability was changed. It used to be one energy to, cop to uh, make your enemy draw a card and copy it, and now it costs two energy, which makes his ability much trickier to uh, activate. And instead, as a result, I've got many cards in my deck which do uh, card draws for me and the enemy. Alpharius, of course, also starts the game always as Alpha Legionary. Usually, you want to reveal your identity straight away so that you can generate his... Let's go back down here to the bottom. So you can... Uh, there we go. Trigger his secret twin ability um, because it lowers uh, by cost by one every turn. So the sooner you act reveal yourself, the sooner you can end up activating yourself as a Magon. And usually you're interested in this more for the healing five side of it and stunning the enemy warlord than the Omegon ability. Omegon can be handy, but uh, most of the time, if I've turned into Omegon, I don't actually use his little ability over here. He's the only Primark who, in his converted form, does not gain three attack. He stays at two attack. All right, so that's Alpharius. Now let's talk about the three win conditions. The classic Alpha Legion win condition is the Harrowing. And so with this card, you'll deal one damage per card in the enemy hand to everything on the enemy side. So you're going to spend the game trying to maximize the enemy warlord's hand size in order to play the Harrowing for the most damage. And as I said, you'll notice there are a lot of cards in this deck which will uh, draw cards for the enemy. Autolon Score is the second win condition. You play Autolon Score, you stun all the enemy troops, although not the enemy warlord, but the enemy warlord does still take three damage. And sometimes you can either kill the enemy warlord with that three damage, or with all of his troops stunned, he's dead meat for Autolon Score, who will kill him the next turn. The third win condition is Pale Spear. <clears throat> so I used to not be impressed with this card at first because it just used to be uh, deal one damage to the enemy warlord when you drew a when you draw a card, and it used to be quite finicky to try to set things up to uh, draw enough cards to kill the enemy. All of that changed when Orbital Base came out. <clears throat> so this was one of the new neutral cards which was introduced a couple months back, and at first glance it seems pretty innocuous. Shuffle your hand into your deck and draw a similar number of cards. But that second sentence is key. Because you're drawing cards, it triggers sp Pale Spear per card that you draw. So potentially, with one orbital base, you can inflict, I believe, eight or nine points of damage if you have a full hand. And if you're lucky, you'll just draw another orbital base out of that and you can do another round of damage. <clears throat> so it can be very lethal, combos very well with Pale Spear. All right, let's now take a look at the other cards in the deck. <clears throat> First up, Fleeing Populace. This is the only deck which I ever use Fleeing Populace in. Although on the one hand, it's a good card because it's free. It's a unit which is free. The downside is its backlash ability here. It, your opponent will draw a card. And unless you're Alpharius or Alpha Legion, you will never want your enemy to draw a card because it gives them more option. But for Alpha Legion, a big hand on the enemy is fodder for the Harrowing or a couple of other abilities. So this is a pretty handy card over here. Lictisio Devinatus, this is great. It fills up the enemy hand with one card. Also, it draws two cards for yourself, which is great if you've already pulled Pale Spear. Or it helps you to build up your hand size to do an orbital base and uh, uh, strike with after you've got Pale Spear. 
alpha order. Now this is a rare, very rarely used uh, secret order. Most people for Alpha Legion will play Gamma order, which means that when a troop with that order attacks the enemy warlord, it attacks the uh, and uh, it attacks your own warlord instead. But that's kind of obvious. Everyone expects Gamma order, and therefore, if you put a secret order on a unit, they'll often try to use that to attack one of your own units instead of your warlord. And so that's why I've started playing Alpha Order instead, because people will think their troop has a Gamma Order and therefore attack my troops and I take control of theirs. It's complex, you'll see it in action later in this video. Ambassador Melgator, well that's just a classic, it's an important one in almost any deck, if you have him, include him. Cyraria Squad, so these guys are actually really useful, I love having them in my deck as a first turn unit. Basically, it causes me and the enemy to draw a card, so it sets him up for the harrowing, it sets me up for orbital base, it's a win-win. Aleph Null Veteran, this is the first of the stun cards you're going to see in this deck. So, this is pretty straightforward, rally and stun the most powerful thing on the board. Ghost Legionary is really important for Alpha Legion, it's a unit which just gets stronger and stronger and stronger the uh, more the game goes on. And you can do some manipulation, like uh, use Alpharius' ability to force the enemy to draw a card, or attack them with, and with fleeing populace, have it die to make the enemy draw a card, or even play um, Lictitia Divinatus to force the enemy to draw a card, and all of that will help make Ghost Legionary stronger, so it's a great card to have. If your enemy ignores it, they go out of control and get super powerful super fast. I already talked about orbital base, so we're going to go on to Fortunus veterans. These are guys who also uh, synchronize well if you're filling up the enemy hand, because the enemy has six or more cards in their hand. When you drop Fortunus veterans, they will stun one target on the field as well as doing two damage. That's a great effect to have. Most of the time with this deck, you've filled up the enemy hand enough that you'll be able to benefit from their ability. One of many. This deck has a lot of healing in it. With two one of many's, um, it does a minimum of 10 points of healing, five from each one of many cards, plus the Omegon card is another five points of healing. And if you're lucky, you'll get Alpharius, which is another five points of healing. And if, if you get another Alpharius uh, identity, then you get another Omegon to go with that, which gives you another five. So this deck can often come back from taking huge damage with just big heals. Saboteur Squad. I love this unit. It has very poor stats for 4 energy, only 2 attack and 3 health. But what it does, its rally ability is key. It reduces the opponent's maximum energy by 1. So it slows down the rate at which they can play the more powerful units. And often that means that their hand keeps getting filled up with cards they can't play. Which helps you with harrowing later on. Hydra's Heads. I used to not like this, but now I love them, especially ever since the nerf to Alpharius, where you can't reliably use his ability to draw cards anymore. Hydra's Head has a lot of health. If your enemy doesn't have the right things to take it out, and it survives till your next turn, you and the enemy are drawing a card, and that can often be a huge deal. Lambda Thunderhawk, this is the third stun card we see in here, and it's probably the best stun card in the game, because it deals four damage to the target, and it stuns the target as well as the adjacent unit, so you're potentially uh, stunning three things on field at once. That's great. And the last card, it's um, a powerful damage card as well as a stun, is the instrument. You sort of save this card for when the enemy has a really powerful unit and they've kept it right next to their warlord. And you can use that then to uh, basically punish them for having too strong a unit. All right, so uh, before I round off and we actually show you the deck in action, I just want to talk about potential substitutions. So for Melgator, um, as I always said, uh, if you don't have Melgator, probably Seek and Destroy is your best substitution because at three points of damage, it'll help you remove a bunch of troops on the board. It's not I mean, it's nowhere near as great as Melgator, but at least what you hit with Seek and Destroy is not coming back if it dies. Alright, the next legendary in here was uh, Pale Spear. Now the interesting thing is if you don't have Pale Spear, well, Orbital Base becomes kind of pointless. So it's not just one card you're replacing, it's two car three cards. 
And also you may not want Lictisio Divinatus in there anymore either. So you're looking at potentially having five cards available in your deck if you don't have Pale Spear. I would normally recommend then, if you don't have those, that you go with a Headhunter Squad. Because you're still going to be trying to fill up the enemy deck with units. And so you're probably... So enemy deck with the cards. And so the odds are the enemy will still have more than five cards in hand most of the time. So Headhunter's Rally ability will trigger. Other alternatives include Covert Support. Or Efreet Squad. Or even, potentially, if you don't have those ones, you could go and start filling up with Sleeper Operatives and Cultists instead. Alright, <clears throat> next up is going to be uh, if you don't have the instrument. So this one's pretty straightforward. I think if you don't have the instrument or uh, if you don't have Autolon score, you're clearly uh, the best alternative is going to be Camillara squad. So this is also a stunning ability. When you drop them, they can stun anything including the enemy warlord. And after that, they can stun enemy troops. So it's the next best thing to having um, Autolon Score or the instrument out there. And their own stats are not bad either. Alright, so with that, what we're going to do is go ahead and take a look at this deck in action. Let's take a look at some replays of some great fights I've had today. Alright, this is a fight where I'm facing an Icona Shuriken. So in this case, I felt pretty okay with my starting hands of cards. Um, I'm hoping to grab something good by copying from him, but I'm setting myself up nicely we for a Pale Spear orbital base combo. It gives me no pleasure to do this. So he begins by taking abandoned supplies and <laughs> yeah, hits face on me. <clears throat> so as I said, I normally like to reveal my reveal myself as Alpharius straight away, so my Ring on card I becomes available. And look at that, I already got a second orbital base as well. Put your blades away, That's actually not Nikona. that great early on, because the odds are when I play the first one, the Greetings. second one will get shuffled, shuffled, uh, shuffled away. Alright, so I copied Salaro bikes from him, which is pretty nice to have. Gives me an option to play next turn. So he plays that guy who does two points of damage to me when rallying. He attacks me directly. And I elect this time, yeah, I'm getting another expensive card out of my deck. I elect to attack his troop directly. I don't care so much about the damage I take, because with one of many, I've got five points of healing. <laughs> Minimum five points. So he attacks my Solaro bikes, which is fine. I played the most defensive move. Curse the Raven on me for one point of damage, and his copy of that Solaro bikes comes out. Now you really have to attack Solaro bikes straight away, because they're not going to die just by attacking you. But, this is why I have one of many, so give 5 points of healing, and I got Exodus. Okay, that's interesting. Alright, he plays the Apocryphy Coleman, which will give him a bunch of healing abilities. Yeah, let's take a look at that. Heal 3 to a friendly unit. Okay, gotta bring out the Pale Spear. I'll accept that Coleman will probably heal him up. But no, he does for whom the bell tolls. This is going to give me a really painful turn. I've got sentence to so every point of damage I take will add two to it. So with that uh, fear from above, I'm taking nine damage from that one card alone right now. Plus, he's going to attack me with Coleman, so that's another five points of damage. And he attacks me with Lycona, so that's another four points of damage. So that was a brutal turn for me. I think I took 9 plus 5, 14. I took 18 points of damage in one turn. But that's fine. I'm Alpha Legion. We can take through this for days. So let's start. I had a big hand and I had Pale Spear in play. So we can uh, go ahead and keep putting out a bunch of cards. Hey, look, my second orbital base came up as well. That was useful. Look at that damage. 8 damage, closing up that gap pretty fast. And let's drop a clean populace, just to, uh, because it looks like his hand size is getting kind of small there. There, that'll help make his hand a bit bigger too. We sent uh, his apothecary back with Melgator. He plays the Raven's Talons, and now he has Sneak <laughs> and attacks. 
He went for the abandoned populace for some reason, presumably knowing it's going to draw cards and he wants to see what options he gets. Alright, Goldstone comes out of his hand and he does a smart thing. He attacks Melgator, which means Goldstone destroys a target but sticks around for one more turn. Alright, more card draws. Let's go with Savage Rear Squad to try to uh, cut down his options. And we will stun him directly. And we may as well attack, trying to get things uh, narrower for him. And at this point, Raven Guard don't have too many options to uh, kill me from 11 health in one turn. He attacks me and takes out my Null Squad. Unfortunately, his Mortar Carrier destroys my other unit, which now leaves me a little bit exposed. Alright. So, let's drop Stereo Squad to draw a card for everyone. And we can bring out another Null Veteran to stun him one more time. And let's just stick a trap in his deck. And generate another card. So I'm generating the card to try to feed Orbital Base. Okay, he's trying to destroy units so his Mortar Strike will land directly on my uh, Warlord again. all these guys dropping out of his hand. Okay, his mortar hit my warlord. So now in the next turn I will die unless he manages to uh, unless I manage to kill him straight away. So let's try to kill him. Leticia Divinatus with Pale Spear to do two points of damage to him. Alright, that worked out nicely. Can't draw any more cards, so let's do an orbital base. So that should be another four points of damage to him. Yep, there we go. One, two, three, and four. And now I can drop Fortunus Veterans to do two points of damage to him and stun him. Although the two points of damage is what I was really after, because watch this now. Cut him to one health. I could kill him by attacking straight away, but let's just stick with using the King Spear for this. Exodus in position. Draw a card when I become Exodus and then draw a card. <laughs> So that's an example of a game where I won by really relying on Pale Spear and Orbital Bases. Alright. Alright, we're up against Raza, who's a very good Alpha Legion player. These starting cards were terrible, so I'm getting rid of them. They won't give me many good options for my first couple of turns. That's slightly better. We I get the Ghost Legion. Legion. I can work with that. We are and I have Alvarius. the initiative as well, so I do my normal move. I reveal my secret identity, so my Magon card becomes victory. available as soon as possible. And... Okay, I copy Melgutor. That's not terrible. He reveals himself as well. He'd be Terror Altharius, and Razo basically plays nothing but Altharius. And he goes into Abandoned Supply, so he'll be able to hit me with a cheap card in a couple moments. Okay, that's good. With two Ghost Legionaries, I can see what he will do to react. I think, I thought at this point he was going to play as Melgador to send the Ghost Legionary back to my hand. And I think I proved it right. Yep, here it goes. Ghost Legion's back with only one point of energy. There wasn't much else he could do except for that guy who he got for cheap with his flies in the first turn. So we're both on 36 health, but he's got a lot more units than me. So I just throw my Ghost Legionary right back out there again, because next turn he'll have 4 health, which is enough that the Null Veteran can't kill him alone. So the Null Veteran attacks him and dies, and Melgator attacks him and dies. Now what comes up is Alpha Order. So this is where things start getting interesting. I drop my Null Veteran and stun his Warlord. And then I pull out Alpha Order and drop that. And so now he doesn't know that it's Alpha Order. All he knows is I played a Secret Order and he's thinking it's most likely going to be a Gamma Order. It could be a Delta or Omega, so he plays a cheap unit to see if it's an Omega Order, which would damage him when he deploys but nothing happens. Now he knows it's not an Omega Order. His turn is ended and he hasn't stunned his Warlord, so he knows it's not a Gamma, a Delta Order either. So it's either Gamma or Alpha. But remember, no one plays Alpha Order. 
but he's still not sure. He's not taking a chance. I played P Pale Spear to try and get ready for doing a later in the game. So he attacks uh, with Alpharius, but he still doesn't know if that Ghost Legionary has a Gamma Order or not on him. So he's not taking the risk of doing an attack. Meanwhile, I play my own Ghost Legionary. I also play Melgator and send that Headhunter back to his hand. I've got a, a, a abandoned pop, fleeing populace on the field now too. All right, so now my Ghost Legionary is starting to look a bit threatening. So he plays La the Thunderhawk to damage and stun that, as well as stun my Warlord. He still seems nervous about his uh, using his Ghost Legionary, because again, he does not know what that secret order is. For all he knows, attacking me is going to do a ton of damage to his Warlord. So I'm going to try and play on that fear. Watch. So, I play the Crusade of Anatis to draw more cards, so it looks like I'm deliberately making the Ghost Legionary stronger. 8, 9, wow, look at that. I play the Null Veteran and I stun his Warlord so instead of his really powerful Ghost Legionary, so it looks to him as though I'm trying to get his Ghost Legionary to act. So now he goes ahead, turns into a Legion. And now he's thinking about what to do here. And he thought it was a Gamma Order. And so now My I've got control of his really powerful Ghost Legionary and he just gives up. So, that was a nice little victory. Uh, this one is actually, I think, the Alpha Order which won me the game because I just took control of the enemy's most powerful unit and he had no way, real way to deal with that afterwards. So this is a fight now against Conrad Curse. So, starting off, um, I like having Pale Spear in my hand to start with, although I hate hunting for it later on. Ghost Legionary is great early on. The Instrument is a card you want in late game when powerful units come out. So I'm going to give up the Instrument. We are Legion. This is perfect. I got Serial. Welcome the Darkness! First turn move. So, as always, I first begin by revealing myself as Altharius. Again, to specifically this get is my a victory. Uh, Omega on True ready. victory! There we go, Secret Twin is coming out. And then, actually, this time I decided to copy a card. That's because I was thinking I might use Syriaris Squad um, later on to buff Ghost Legionary. To be honest, I probably should have played that first, but anyway. It worked out fine. He didn't play any extra units. Alright, Ghost Legionary goes down and hits the board. If Ghost Legionary survives, next turn Syriaris Squad and uh, Alpharius' ability will actually buff him a lot. But unfortunately, he had other plans. He used his Recon Claw to give his Skitari Protector uh, flank and destroy Ghost Legionary. Alright, time to... Uh, he, he's, he played the Asteroid Belt earlier on because he's trying to race ahead to his transformed... Um, Night Hunter form, so let's try and slow him down a little with the Saboteur squad. So he's sort of, he's lost the extra big edge he had in terms of energy over me. He's back to where he was at the start. So he uses his Mercy and Forgiveness, which allows him to attack twice in every turn for the rest of the game, to basically pick off my Saboteur squad. I guess he must have really pissed him off or something. He's only got four cards in hand, unfortunately, which is going to make harrowing him kind of hard right now. So, I, at this point, I'm assuming that this is going to have to be an orbital base approach. Except he plays Forge Complex, which is a card generator. Yeah. That sort of works a little bit in my favor, although he still has just four cards in hand. Alright. There you go, the harrowing comes. That'll be great to play, except with only four cards in his hand, it's kind of pointless. Alright, let's start uh, trying to take out his Recon Claw. Also, that Skatari Protector will need some effort by him to get. Alright, so that's his first Mechanicum Troop coming out of his Forge Complex. Ooh, he goes a dirty fighter. So, with Dirty Fighter and losing his Recon Claw, he manages to kill the Atari Protector without dealing any damage. 
We're now in coming up to turn 7 and he's getting perilously close to his Night Haunter form which gets extremely annoying to deal with. Okay, but now I've got a bunch of card draw cards coming as well as a bunch of handy stuff. So make him draw a card. Now he's got 6 cards which makes him vulnerable to stunning. But well, I'm going to use Thunderhawk Gunship because I want to stun both his Warlord as well as a neighboring unit. Whereas if I did Fortune as Veterans, only his Warlord would be stunned. So now look at that. His uh, hand is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, which is good, uh, exactly where I want him for the Harrowing. Alright, what comes up next? We're going to use Melgazor to send his new guy back into his hand. Because remember, I want to keep that hand big because next turn a harrowing could be coming. Make him draw a card. And with the pale spear I played earlier, every time I draw a card as well, he's taking damage. And now I stun him. Alright. His Mechanicum troop is free to act this time, but now already his hand is fulled up. That was a good move by him. With a satellite strike, he does a lot of damage to a bunch of my people, and he goes and tries to clear out my board. Ooh, an Ostramo. Not a this turn, and he draws another card. Alright, well next turn he's going to turn into Night Hunter unless I can do something about this. So let's try and do something about this. We're going to use the Thunderhawk to stun him, so that even if, it, even if he becomes Night Haunter, he can't actually do anything. Otherwise, without that, he would have turned into Night Haunter, attacked Melgator, and gone into stealth mode again. To give him the turn back, his hand is totally full, so he can't do anything there. Alright, he drops his Skitari Protector, and he drops the Goldstones. His Goldstone goes and hits me. Okay, so now I need to make sure that the Ambassador dies right now, otherwise next turn when he turns into Night Haunter, he could attack that and get stealth. So with the uh, Ambassador gone, I can play uh, Otlon Score, who's my highest health unit. It should be very difficult for him to uh, actually kill Score and go into uh, invisible mode soon. But let's see what happens. So his people are all stunned. He's got a full hand of card. That means only one more There we go. But I can't finish him off yet because first of all I don't have any energy. Secondly, he's in stealth mode. His hand is nice and full though. But oh, look at that. He managed to cut off the score to one health. Which means the Night Hunter can attack me and then attack Otlon Score and go invisible. But invisibility is no protection because I've got the Pale Spear out and I have an orbital base in my hand. In fact, I've got two orbital bases in my hand, so now this is game over for him. I can use my one of many just to also draw one extra card. Okay, my identity turned out to be Finalist Dynat. So I'm just generating cards so that my orbital base will have a bigger effect. The harrowing is coming. There we go. And so reveal myself, do one point of damage, and finish him off now with an orbital base. I think that's six points of damage coming up. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. And that's it. Even being Night Haunter and Invisible cannot protect him from fatal damage because of the to be there plus orbital base. Alright, so I hope you guys have a sense of how this deck plays now. Um, as I said, uh, it has three win conditions involved. You can win either with the with the Harrowing or Autolon Score or with the Pale Spear and Orbital Base. So uh, yeah, try this deck out, and most importantly, don't forget to, sir, uh, to subscribe, and remember, Hydra Dominatus. Alright, bye guys.